barber and dream chaser and student. You're an Ander. At National University, we see the whole you. That's why we've created online and hybrid programs that flex to help you balance your full life so you can focus on what's right in front of you. National University, supporting the whole you. Are they really going to spend all day streaming college football on DirecTV? Can you blame them? They've got the biggest rivalries. And bowl games. Speaking of, Frank, run a slant to the bowl of chips. Bobby, button hook to the salsa. What are you going to do, Coach Prime? Don't question your coach, man. Now at five, no longer missing. Three weeks after missing her flight at LAX, NBC4 has exclusive details about the whereabouts of Hannah Kobayashi. Plus, a shock for people coming in and out of a pet hospital. Some dro Someone drove right through their front door. Where did this happen? And the man accused of slapping a boy with autism after he says the youngster touched his car. That man appeared in court for the first time today. The News at 5 begins right now. NBC4 News at 5 starts with breaking news. And that breaking news at 5, NBC4 has learned that Hannah Kobayashi, the woman who vanished after she flew from Hawaii to LAX last month, has now crossed the border into Mexico. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Colleen Williams. And I'm Annabelle Sedano. LAPD Chief Jim McDonald said last week that Kobayashi missed her connecting flight at LAX on purpose. Investigative reporter Eric Leonard joins us live with details you're hearing for the first time and only on 4. Eric. Hi, we're expecting an official update from the police department sometime this afternoon, but I can tell you from a number of our contacts, they believe that Hannah Kobayashi crossed into Mexico some time ago. They have video evidence, they say, and they say it was near the San Ysidro crossing near Tijuana. Now, this happened back on November 12th, but it's just coming to light now, days after LAPD Chief Jim McDonald said publicly or indicated publicly that Kobayashi may have intentionally disappeared. Nonetheless, detectives have continued to work this case. Our hearts go out to the Kobayashi family during this unimaginable time of grief. We remain fully committed to locating Hannah and supporting the family. Now, Kobayashi arrived at LAX on November 8th. She missed that connecting flight to New York, and the chief said last week, again, that appears to have been intentional. Several law enforcement sources say after she was spotted at locations around LA over the next few days, she was then recorded on video at the San Ysidro border crossing, leaving the U.S. and entering Mexico on November 12th to 13th. That following Sunday, Kobayashi's father, Ryan, was found dead near LAX. He had flown, from L or flown to LA from Hawaii to assist in the search and as we've reported the coroner said he died by suicide now keep in mind the LAPD says this case is not closed they're still trying to get in contact with Hannah Kobayashi to make sure she's okay to make sure that nothing uh, foul or nothing untoward has happened they say there's no evidence of foul play and it appears that she left the U.S. on her own free will and again we're expecting to get some additional information from the police department tonight live at LAPD headquarters I'm investigative reporter Eric Leonard NBC4 News back to you Eric, thank you very much for that update. Meantime, coming up at 530, Chief Jim McDonald will hold a press conference with the latest details about this investigation. We will, of course, bring it to you live when it happens. Now to our other top story. The man accused of slapping a child with autism appeared in court for the first time today. Video of that slap went viral out of Pacoima, and NBC4's Karma Dickerson was in court and joins us with what that man had to say. Karma. Well, that man did not make any public comments, but he did take responsibility via his lawyer and via some written documents for slapping that child. Nevertheless, he is asking a judge to intervene in this case and make sure the criminal proceedings don't go any further. Can you give us anything? The court was not here. Scott Sakajian appearing in court for the first time since this video went viral last July. Sakajian acknowledges through court documents and through his attorney that he is the one in the video slapping 10 year old Alfredo Morales, who is autistic. Today, as he faces charges of misdemeanor cruelty of a child and battery, the 54 year old asked the court to place him on judicial diversion. Antonio Villegas, the attorney for Morales' family, opposes that. It suspends the criminal proceedings while the person complies with certain orders that the court makes. If they are successful, 
they never have a criminal conviction on their record. Neither Sakajian nor his attorney, James 